I, just, I got plenty of corn here. They're eating the corn. There's, it's fine. So he gets back and he um he starts setting up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. We have a fish on. I'm gonna take him out to the point. So here's what we're doing today. I'm on this kick where I wanna like hang out with people who are experts at certain types of fishing. And behind me there, that's a legend right there. That's Mark Masacampo. I followed him, shoot, since like 2005. And then I got to meet him in person, fish with him. Actually caught a cool video of him catching a six pound bass out at Lopez Lake on a homemade like little yellow fly. It was a pretty epic time, but just watching him throw swim baits and chase big lean cod and all that stuff just back, oh shoot, like 2010, 11. And it's, it's worthy to, to note he did catch a 25 pound striped bass on a Lucky Craft 190 bait. And I ended up buying like five of those just because of him. But he's gonna show us today how he catches carp so that's pretty interesting because not a lot of people target carp and then not a lot of people target carp to the level that he does here. They do it quite a bit in Europe and carp is like the main targeted species, but for some reason it really hasn't caught on here in the States. But our buddy Mark is gonna let us in on all the cool things that he does to get carp. So we have some pack bait and it's made out of soybean meal and a can of sweet corn. It's actually a cream style sweet corn. We're gonna go put it on our rig. When was the first time you like targeted carp? Like how long ago? When I was a kid in Hawaii, we used to do that. I wanna say 1965, 1966, somewhere in there. The carp are largely vegetarians. So um, something as simple as a dough ball or you get a piece of bread and you ball it up real tight Put it on a hook, it's as easy as that. Another thing that I use is guero tortilla. That, that works really well. In fact, we might throw some on today. So this old pop-up, I'm just gonna put some flavor on it, some corn flavor. It's a visual bait. They're gonna swim by. <clears throat> they're gonna smell the, the pack bait and they're gonna grab anything that looks like bait or food. All right, let's get this guy in the water. Not very far at all. No, I fish these pretty close in. Is it important since it's so close that you uh, are a bit more stealthy and not move, make super fast movements? Um, usually. But they don't have much fishing pressure here, so I think we're okay. The rods are on a contraption we call a rod pod. <clears throat> it holds the rods in place. I have some bite alarms in the front end that when a fish takes the line and the line runs through this roller, it gives us an audible and a visual uh, warning. So that's what we'll be listening for, guys. That same beep, once it goes off, we know there's a fish that's pulling that line and I'm assuming that the drag set really loose. Probably want these fish to run a bit. But Mark was talking about how really, since nobody targets these fish and it's just a weird re like for, for whatever reason, they don't get targeted as hard. They're just such great fighters. Right, Mark? They are really good fighters. If you ever catch a carp, you're never gonna wanna fish anything else. They fight so hard. So, so once I get it on there, I'll pull that out and the part in the, the tip right here will come out and go sideways so the bait doesn't fall off. So now it's separate from, from the hook. Yeah, they say it's a, it's a big deal. Um, it has been for me, but we'll see. So I got a couple of piece, pieces of kernel on there. This is a method feeder. Oh. It's, this lays flat on the bottom like this, it's weighted. It lays flat on the bottom like that, and you compress the corn, uh, the oh. 
the soybean meal or whatever pack bait you have on top of it so it'll sit like this. You see this little weight that I clipped on the back end? Uh, that allows us to hear an alarm if a carp takes the bait and comes towards us. It's called a drop back weight. So if it's coming towards us, slack is introduced into the line that drops. Exactly. Pulls the line through the alarm and we'll hear it. We are set. So it's all on the fish. These particular reels are specifically set up um, and designed for carp. Um, it's got a drag system. It's a front drag system that um, you, it, you set it a designated uh, length to come off the spool really easy. And then you give it two clicks to the right and then you're on a regular drag. You're fighting the fish at that point. And they have special spools for the carp I fishing. Will. Yeah. Um, I think I have 20 pound test mono on there right now. These, these rods are specifically set up for the bigger fish. This gear is all from a, a carp website. So you could use really, you could use any rod and reel that you want to. Um, as, as all the way down to a crappie outfit, cause I've caught them out here on a two pound test with my crappie rod. I gotta tell you, that's pretty exciting. Um, but these rods right here, they're set up for bigger fish. You know, if you really want a bigger fish, you know, you're, the guys that use these outfits are typically fishing, you know, 15, 25, 35 pound fish. It's just a matter of going out and having fun. The thing is, they're powerful enough to take or break a rod. So you either have to be holding onto your rod or have a lanyard attached to your rod so they don't take it. Um, or have the drag set really light so that they'll just pull line. They'll take drag and not take your rod with them. You know, now you... Go, 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 go. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, I think it missed. I missed. Oh, I missed. <laughs> now, these are not circle hooks. They're, they're kind of more octopus hooks. Yeah, these are specifically um, hooks designed for... Oh, oh. oh. There's there's a group of them feeding and swimming around. So if they bit it or if they swam through the line, I'm not sure. But um, it's time. We'll get this stuff set back up and we'll get on them. Kind of cool, huh? <laughs> Just so you know what I didn't do. So these quick drags, they're called quick drags. Um, when you set the drag light enough for them to take line, you have to remember before you pick up the rod is to give it like two or three clicks back in the positive direction um, so you could fight the fish. Because I picked up that rod on free spool basically. Ah. Um, and that fish felt the sting of the tip of the hook and was able to shake loose. So that's a, a beginner's thing. This is my first day. <laughs> it's still pretty fun. <laughs> Some of those uh, carp reels actually have a lever. I believe it's a lever up and it free spools. And then when you get bit, you just turn the handle or you flip it down or, or the opposite direction. And then it'll, uh, it'll be to your preset drag setting. Start setting up. Yeah, yeah. All right, we have a fish on. I'm gonna take him out to the point. Uh, this one was baited with corn only. Is that pretty loose? Yeah, it's pretty loose. All right, we got the right flavor. Sweet. <laughs> the 
Apparently the drag was a little tighter than I thought it was. You see the rod start to move off? I was like, oh, that's a big fish. Looks like it's a good size one. Probably five, six pounds. Oh, yeah. So typically on days that I forget to bring my boga grip, I'll just let them get tired and then I'll just gently lay them on the shoreline, take the hook out, and then I'll slowly put them back in. You can see that method feeder, it doesn't scare them at all. It's kind of color coordinated, color coordinated, coordinated with the bottom. Oh, he's camera shy. <laughs> They're all around your corn, bud. Hey, watch, watch that other rod. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's typical for a fight right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the bigger ones, quite a bit tougher fight, but I just love these guys. When he's ready, he'll let me just lay him right on the side here without banging himself up. And then I'll take the hook out. <laughs> of course, I didn't bring my... Need some pliers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I got it. You got him? Free. Okay. All right, we'll get this guy back out. Suprinus Carpio. I love these guys. God, I love doing that. Ever since I was a kid. And I still love doing it. <laughs> Keeps me young. We got one to play. Yeah, what gosh. Nice carp. Mark. Thank you for taking us into the world of carpdom. Oh, you're welcome. I wish we could have got into better action, but maybe the next time. Yeah. If we, if we hit it early in the morning, I think we'll see more action, definitely. Okay. It'll be good. Yeah, definitely. Oh, dark 30. Mm-hmm. You hear that, guys? There's going to be a part two. In the comments below, if we didn't cover something that you really want to know, uh, leave that and then we'll definitely address them on our next trip out So it's probably gonna be in about a week or two weeks, but we'll definitely be back So there's definitely gonna be a part two because we want to hear those things really really scream not just once But like twice or three times or four times if you want to see an example of another video that we did like this Where we highlighted somebody who's really into something uh, a certain type of fishing check out this video right here we filmed the creaky tiki and he was out there doing some magic on some yellowtail with a really long rod that Bob was inspired by. So definitely check that out. We'll catch you guys on the next one.